It is really hard to have a bad show when you have the ability to incorporate all types of extreme stipulations. Falls count anywhere, last man standing, or tables matches, no holds bar matches, so on and so forth. You gotta be really bad, really shitty at professional wrestling to botch a show where you could do all that stuff. Just open up some parameters of the possibilities of what you could do. And while certainly WWE Extreme Rules 2019 was far from perfect, there were some matches that were clunkers, some things that were stupid. Ultimately, there were enough things that were positive where I ultimately enjoyed my viewing experience on Sunday night. And by God, that means something. I have that internal conflict whenever I see Taker is going to wrestle. Yes, I know I'm wearing the shirt, but hence ties into the internal conflict. Like, he's one of my all-time favorites. I love The Undertaker. But I just really don't have much of a desire to see him anymore. It's like you can tell this is a guy that's just out there for cash grabs and so forth, and he's earned that right to do whatever the hell he wants. I'm not here to judge that. I'm just saying it's like it's both cool to see him, and I want him to go away. But damn it all, then you get something like this. I was really surprised this No Holds Barred match started off the show, but thank God it did. Because I was fresh as a daisy, I had all of my energy, I'm glad this wasn't buried later on in the night where maybe I would have been a lot more tired and my viewpoint would have been different. But this match was an outstanding way to kick off the show. It was so much fun. Drew McIntyre to me looked like a main eventer. Roman Reigns looked pretty good. You know, Shane, eh. But The Undertaker looked the best I had seen him in a long, long time. And it wasn't like they hit him. It wasn't like he just did a couple of things and that's it, or they just did a short-ass match. I mean, this match had some length to it, and Taker was bumping and doing some serious shit, and he looked fantastic. It's a shame we haven't seen Taker look like this more in recent years when he does these sporadic appearances, because my God, if he still looked like this, I'd still be pining for him to wrestle at WrestleMania. This match was fantastic as a curtain jerker. During the Raw tag title match, I'm sitting there the whole time thinking about, I'm waiting for the Revival to impress me, and they just don't. It doesn't help when Renee Young's talking about them going and getting expensive coffee and shit. Shut up, bitch! You're not helping anything! How can it be so hard to have good wrestling commentary nowadays? Like, seriously, Jesus Christ. But this match, them and the Usos, eh. It just kind of was. Now, they were probably in an unenviable spot of following that no-holds-barred match. That probably played a factor, but I was expecting this match to have been a little bit more than it ultimately was. The Aleister Black versus Cesaro fight didn't really feel like much of a fight to me. Like, as much as they were hyping it up as a fight, I would have liked to have seen it been a fight. Punches, kicks, elbows, brawling... And not, not so much in the way of traditional wrestling moves. I mean, to me, I've been perfectly fine if this had just been a fight that degraded to the point where it was a double countout, double DQ, or the match never even started. Because I feel like you could have gotten more mileage out of this, of having more time to actually build up to it, and then you could come back to it at SummerSlam. It's just a thought. Um, because as I'm watching this, I'm like, man, Alistair Black could really benefit from Paul Heyman's influence. He he really, really could. It's just not translating, as we say so often the case with the NXT guys that come up to the main roster. But this match, to me, was not all that great. It was not that impressive. Now, maybe part of that is I was just stuck in my own bullshit about, I think it should be this way, I think it's stupid, but the reality is I just didn't think it was that great. And it didn't feel like the crowd was into it until close to the very end. And let's be realistic here. Aleister Black winning this match from a kayfabe standpoint doesn't make a whole lot of sense because at the end of the day, who the fuck is Cesaro and why would beating him make any damn bit of difference? The SmackDown Women's Championship handicap match was trash. I don't know why I'm not surprised that this was trash, but it was trash. It never got going. It never connected. It never resonated. And then you have Bailey fucking win in a one-on-two handicap match clean. No bullshit, no hook, no crook, no nothing. She just wins. For Christ's sakes, if this was Roman Reigns or John Cena doing this crap in a title match, people would be flaming the fucking internet down. But because it's Bailey and everybody wants the others, it's okay. No, it was bullshit. What a colossal waste of time this was. I know I tweeted about the last man standing match with Braun and Lashley and said, 
Well, all the crap they're doing around the arena feels like this is should be more of a Falls Count Anywhere match, and that would be more appropriate to that. I know they just had the match a couple weeks ago as Falls Count Anywhere. I get that. It was just... I was just making a point, okay? But damn it all, bottom line is, a last man standing match should be really, really hard to have suck. Let's be realistic. Because you can do anything. You just got to keep going until somebody doesn't get up. Like, you should be able to at least pull off a good match. And this was really good. This was a lot of fun. The finish, I at least give the WWE this. When it comes to Braun in these big matches, they find creative ways to do these awesome finishers that make him look like a monster, breaking through the boards and shit after sitting there doing the power slam off of the fucking um, stands. It was freaking awesome. The optics looked incredible. Probably won't matter to fucking Hell of Beans because they don't know how to follow up on stuff like this. But I enjoyed the hell out of this match. It was so much fun, similar to the No Holds Bar match. And I enjoyed the fact that it was spaced out because at this point in time in the night, I needed something to boost me up a little bit, especially as a crappy-ass SmackDown Women's Championship match, and this match delivered that for me. The surprise match of the night to me, maybe it shouldn't have been, but it was, was a SmackDown Tag Team Championship. God damn, Otis is a fucking hoot. He's a fucking hoot. I would like them not to do so many spots with him running because it looks really awkward and slow, but damn it all, it's nice to see guys with some character and personality being featured in showcase. It's fucking fun. And this match in general was just fun. Wasn't nearly as good as a no holds bar match or a last man standing match, but following up that last man standing match, these guys went out there, all three teams, and did a hell of a job. This match was pretty cool. The New Day winning, I guess, could be cool, but it's kind of like, eh, maybe I want Otis and Tucker to kind of have the belts. I'm just kind of throwing that out there, you know, just... But the, the most important thing of all is, damn it when you have the Raw reunion next Monday night, can we get a battle of the bugs? The Caterpillar versus the fucking worm. Who's with me on that one? Easily the most disappointing match of the night, because I had some type of expectations for it, uh, was this United States Championship match with AJ and Ricochet. This match was long, didn't really connect with the audience, and that surprised me a little bit. There's one thing, if I wasn't really into it, I was surprised the Philly crowd wasn't really into it. They, and they really weren't. Uh, and, to, and to me, I'm just not buying all this hype with Ricochet. He does some cool and awesome shit. I do not dispute that at all. But a lot of guys do moves that are fucking cool as shit. Hell, the Young Bucks do some moves that are cool as shit. And I'll give them that. But at least they are are able to connect with their core audience in more ways. I just don't see it with Ricochet. And what I really don't see is the desire for fans to want to boo AJ as a heel. It just, it just It's awkward. It just doesn't work, at least at this point. Maybe it does, but I don't hold out a lot of hope. I, ju I just don't. Uh, like I said, the match in general was just really kind of bland to me and a bit disappointing. The last few minutes, the overall finishing sequence was pretty good. So when it got to the end... It wasn't bad, but it was too long, and it didn't really accomplish much for me anyways. Saying that Kevin Owens cut the best shoot promo of all time on SmackDown last week is ignoramus crap. Sitting there and saying that he is mega over as a baby face without seeing how the WWE actually follows it up, to me, is just hypish, sheepish fanboy bullshit. But damn it all, you keep doing stuff like this, I might have to agree with that second notion. Oh! Oh! This is how you do things! You want me to care about it, Kevin Owens? This is how you do it, damn baby! 17 seconds? Let me hear it! One time loud and proud! <coughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! I have to say, where I was talking about I was disappointed with the United States title match, I was disappointed in the WWE Championship match too. Kofi and Samoa Joe got less time than the SmackDown Women's Championship match, and it felt like... This WWE Championship match could have at least used another five minutes. Because it was less than ten minutes, and when it finally they seemed like it was starting to get going, it was kind of over, and you're kind of like, huh, that's it? I think the number one thing that was most important in, in most fans' minds, and most certainly mine, especially with Heyman's promo early in the night, was, they're not going to do it, are they? Those racist fucks. They're not going to sit there and do it, are they? They're not going to have Brock cash in on fucking Kofi, are they? You'd assume not because Heyman's going to be in charge of Raw, but you never know with this goddamn company. 
The whole time I'm watching that match, that's the primary thing on my mind. So I was happy as hell when Kofi won, and there were no shenanigans, and no bullshit. The winners take all mixed tag match. Oh. Look, when I went to the house show up in D.C. a couple of weeks ago, and I saw Baron Corbin versus Seth Rollins in a street fight for the Universal Championship, it was striking to me. Uh, just how bad it was to see Baron Corbin fighting for a world title and just how striking it was to me that Seth Rollins in no way, shape, or form felt like a world champion. He just didn't. And after watching that match, knowing that these guys were going to have a match at Extreme Rules, I had zero level of excitement at all because when I talk about it's hard to have a bad match with Extreme Rules stipulations, uh, that street fight in person was kind of lame. And some of the people around me that were even chanting for Seth Rollins at the beginning agreed with me. Just a lot of things about this doesn't work. You know, the fact that it's Baron Corbin wrestling for a world title is ridiculous. Seth Rollins as a champion blows chunks. Then you got the whole dynamic, which certainly doesn't help, of what feels like this forced Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins dynamic. You know, if you didn't know better, based off of the lack of evident and clear physical emotional, what appears to be sexual chemistry that is demonstrated by these two, you would think this entire relationship is work-forced in bullshit and just a flat-out lie. You wouldn't believe it because there's nothing that you see that indicates it. There just isn't. It just looks weird, and it's infecting both of their characters. It makes them look ridiculous. Baron Corbin stinks. Probably one of the highlights of this match for a lot of people is going to be the zooming up on freaking Lacey Evans' ass. Why did she have Seth written on her ass and then the camera's Kevin Dunn style going in there be tearing it up like it's a fucking carrot, like, what the fuck? But golly, unbelievable. As far as the match, like, I think the most aggravating thing to me, again, up until the dynamic change, is I think it's so ridiculous that people are so caught up in equality and all this other bullshit in today's world but we're okay with women hitting men repeatedly. But as soon as the men respond, it's a fucking problem and it's a fucking issue. And of course, you have to know there were people that were bitching and moaning, even though Becky's laying hands on people and fucking, you know, Lacey Evans can lay hands on people. But all of a sudden, Barry Corbin does one fucking wrestling move on Becky Lynch and it's a problem. Oh, give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. The best part about this match, the first time that I actually thought, you know, actually, Seth and Becky could actually be a couple, was seeing his reaction afterwards when a man put his hands on his woman. Like, that made sense. That connected. That resonated. The dude flipped. He went off the fucking handle. It was the most interesting thing I've seen Seth Rollins do in a long damn time. It's too bad that it was happening against Baron Corbin in this fuck-off match with this fuck-all result. Especially when you look at, after Seth Rollins has to hit three curb stomps for the fuck all of it to beat Baron Corbin, something else happened. Everybody was wondering, Paul Heyman said it was going to happen, but maybe it wasn't because he's a Paul Heyman liar. Brock Lesnar's music hits, and out he comes. And yes, while I completely agree, Seth Rollins was a crappy world champion, and Baron Corbin would make an even shittier world champion. Let's not kid ourselves here. Last go-round, Brock Lesnar was a crappy, shitty world champion where many of you couldn't wait for him to drop that fucking strap to, of all people, Seth fucking Rollins. So that way, now, three-plus months later, it's all come full circle right back to square damn nam fucking one again. Like, even the crowd there in Philly, even once you get past the pop that always comes with somebody cashing in money in the bank, some of the fans enjoyed it, and some of the fans... Felt like it was shitty, and you could tell. And to me, I could just sense where it took the steam and the air out of the night for a lot of people. And I can't lie, it did me too. We've been there, we've done that. Brock ain't putting a bunch of more asses in the fucking seats. He's not bringing a bunch more eyeballs into your fucking TV. He's not. This is a panic, knee-jerk, reflex move because fucking USA Network's probably shitting on Vince about the ratings of Raw. I get it. I understand it. But God damn, man. 
It really killed the mo for a decent night for me. I'll say this, even with some of the fuckery and some of the crap that was on Extreme Rules, this was the best wrestling show I watched on the weekend. Sorry, you all elite wackos. Fucking fight for the fallen. Did not measure up to the show, and that's okay. It is okay. But for so many people that were sitting there and talking shit about WWE after Fight for the Fallen. Oh, my God, WWE didn't put anything that awesome. They went out the next night and put on a better show. They just did, and that is okay to admit that, even with the flaws and the shit that WWE had. And before you sit there and flame away with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the comment section of this video, realize who you were talking to and realize who is as likely to shit on the WWE as any fucking body. I will always give you the real dope, whether you fucking like it or not. No biases, no bullshit. You should know that by now. You want to sit there and circle jerk to the same opinions in your fucking circle. Then go follow fucking Dave Meltzer's bias ass. But this show had some fun to it. It was okay. Then the finish, the end, kind of took a little bit of a steam out of the night for me. But eh, what are you going to do? Now the question is, is WWE going to take any momentum away from this show? <laughs> That's being awfully optimistic. But what we do know is that I'm the Schleg Daddy, the angry wrestling man. And this is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. You can let me know what you thought about the show in this damn review in the comment section below. I'm out of here.